Hi guys and welcome back to day 12 of Inktober. So today I am finally getting around to doing two characters in one piece, which as you're going to see as I work on this, it is definitely not that complex. It really is just two portraits of two characters together. So it's it's not like doing two people, two full figures in one piece, but but I'm getting there. I'm getting more variety of what I want into my Inktober pieces at least. And this one it's actually kind of fun because there's a couple ways that you could interpret this. I originally drew it as kind of a two parts of oneself. So it's almost like it's the same character, but in two different versions, two different destinies or fates that she's facing. So I had it a certain way, but I've shown it to another person and they saw it as two different people who are very close together. So I just, I like when pieces can have multiple ways to interpret it as far as what you're seeing. And so that was kind of fun to work with this where it's a little bit more ambiguous, but it's close enough that it can have a few different variations on how you see it. So as I was planning out this concept, it was pretty clear to me that I needed to be able to differentiate the two characters as I was working on it. Whether it's going to end up being the same person or two different people, they do need to be able to be distinct as far as the piece itself so they don't both get lost within themselves. So I was thinking it through as I was sketching it out, what are my options? So when I'm normally using color, I would have desaturated the one that was farther away and I would have used slightly different colors. In fact, I considered doing like a broken mirror in between them, which is a concept that I actually might come back to in a different Inktober. But for this one, I ended up going past that idea. But, but anyways, I have more options when I'm using color for ways to really show the differences because I could use the same values, but two totally different color schemes for the two characters or there's just many things that I could have done to push them. But because I'm working just in black and white, that allowed me to narrow it down to a few options. So the first one that I knew I was going to enact was through the line work. So the character that's closer to us, I knew that I was going to create a much more solid, bold line work. And then the one behind it, eventually when I get to it, she has a very light touch for the pen. Uh, and that one was, I wouldn't say tricky, but it was something that I had to be a little bit more aware of because when I'm using microns, I never get the one stroke done in one stroke or most of the time I don't at least. And that's just built into the way that I use it. I build up the line work so that it becomes as thick as I want and it has the line variation that I want. So that is a huge part of me using microns. It's just going over the lines to add bulk and dimension to them. But because the second character, I really wanted it to be very light on the pen work, I needed to be able to get the lines pretty much exact with the first line that I did. And it's not incredibly hard. It just took a little bit more attention to the beginning and the end of the line itself. That way I was meeting it up to the line before it and where it was tucking in. I had to make sure that I wasn't leaving a really messed up mar. That's usually the areas that I have to go back in and fix and smooth out is the beginning or the end where it doesn't quite meet up to where it was going to be. And I, I get the question a lot where how can I get such smooth line work with my micron pens? And that really is just the trick is going over the line work so that any slight bumps or mistakes are disappearing that you completely cover it up so it looks like a very smooth and complete line but really it just took a few steps to get to that final bold work anyway so that was the first step that I wanted to do to differentiate the two characters and I always want to be able to have steps like this if I can make sure that it is reflected in the line work in the very beginning where I want those to be very different and you can see the contrast in the two characters I strive to find ways that I can incorporate that into the line work itself so that it is as thorough of a read as possible, that each layer, each step that I take to finish a piece, it all comes together to create that effect that I want, if that makes sense. So I did want the beginning, the line work to be this lighter, not sketchier, just lighter, thinner line work. And then after that, when I got to adding the values, I knew that I wanted her to be much more desaturated and all of her values to be a lot closer together, almost ghostly even, or just very 
pale and washed out was really what I was going for. So the character that's closer to us, she ends up having the darkest darks and overall the lightest lights, I suppose. Mostly it's just more the contrast between the darkest and the lightest in her is much greater. Whereas the second character, all the values are lighter and all the values are much closer together. So that really just pushes her back and it has a little bit more of an atmospheric effect on her. So the one element that I really had a lot of push and pull with when I was working on this piece is the moon icon in the background. Well, it's actually two moons. And I kind of, I went about it a little bit the wrong way. I think that usually happens where eventually I get it to a point where I'm happy with it, but it was a really weird winding path that I would have rather have had a solid plan on where I was going to end up and made sure that it was correct from the beginning. But this is one of those cases where I just didn't quite have a complete plan before I started. And that is always a reminder for me personally that I need to have a plan. I need to know what I'm doing. But but I had these two moons and when I painted in the value for the background, the first initial value, I just left the moons white and I wasn't quite sure what I was going to do with them yet. I I love the look of it just being like this change of value without a harsh line, but you really couldn't see it at all. So it needed something. So then I ended up adding a little bit more value or I would add a little bit of a line in the ink wash and it just kind of added on top and on top of itself until it got to a point that it wasn't really a straight shot. It wasn't what I had in mind. I didn't even know what I had in mind, but it wasn't really meshing with the entirety of the piece anymore. And and in the final, it still is its own distinct element that you don't see a lot of that similar effect anywhere else in the piece. But I am happy with where it ends up. But there was a point where it just was, it was really too far out there. So I had to think through exactly what elements I could do to bring it back in without necessarily just going in and bolding it in with my black pen, which was an option. But... Ultimately, it ended up the way I wanted, sort of, and I'm happy with that. And it was an effect that I really like. And if I were to use it again, I can actually plan it and figure it out. But ultimately, the effect that I got was I had used several ink washes below it, especially on the dark moon. I feel like that was the one that I was struggling the most with because I didn't want it to have as dark of a value as I ended up giving it because it was drawing too much attention away from the characters themselves. Uh, but I, I ended up doing some ink washes and then I dabbed it up so it was kind of modeled in effect, I guess you could say. And then I took my white gel pen and eventually I ended up going in and just adding like a stippling effect to it. And then I let it dry and then I used another ink wash on top of it to bring the value down and also to warm up the white because this white gel pen is actually a very cool white compared to the paper and the ink wash. So I, I actually might see if I can find a gel pen that's a little bit more of a warm white. I'm not sure if that exists. If you have suggestions, let me know. But anyways, I, I did the stippling effect and then I ink washed over it and that gave it the value that I wanted, but also kind of an interesting lost and found texture that I really liked. And it mimicked a little bit what was happening with the uh, brush, the patchiness that I had in the background that I created with my brush. So, so overall, I'm actually really interested in the way that it ended up looking and that technique in the future. I'll absolutely have it planned out better so I can incorporate it better throughout the piece, but... But I think in the end, it ended up to be a little bit of a happy accident. And in some of my final steps, I ended up taking my white gel pen and outlining my forefront character with that. And I love being able to really push the difference between overlapping shapes. So I actually broke up where both the characters interact or they overlap, I should say. I broke that up with the white gel pen and I really like that effect a lot actually. I love how it instantly pushes them apart and gives it a lot of dimension, but I did end up going in with the white one for the front character, but I didn't want those outlines to connect and then flatten the whole piece out. So instead of using it on the second character to give it a little bit extra dimension from the background, I went in with just my Micron pen and gave the farther back character a black dark outline, which actually really helped because I did go in with a much lighter hand for her line work. 
she did have a little bit more of a some of the ink wash overlapped a little bit more than I intended, which usually happens. There's usually little mistakes or it blotches over. And when I have really strong line work, it's easier to avoid that. So there were a few things that once I cleaned it up with a nice solid line around her, it really just made the piece come a lot, come together a lot better and finish off better. And that is it for today's Inktober. I do post daily Inktober videos, so stay tuned tomorrow for another one. I also have this original available at my shop, so if you'd like to own this, I have a link in the description as well as in the end card. And uh, that is about it for today, so I'll see you guys at my next one. Thanks for watching.